one time close to the beginning of life here in the little hermitage Sister Martha was helping to set up the house and also the timetable and all kinds of things and left her trace and at one point wanted to go out to see a little bit of the area before returning to Italy and so I suggested going on an Emmaus walk and so it was. Now with a scripture scholar of that calibre an Emmaus walk is something else. One opens the scriptures, one breaks open the word and this is what the Lord did on the way to Emmaus. If only these two disciples had jotted down the references, alas, we can only surmise which were the scriptures that he was alluding to. This is reported only by Luke, and thank God that he has reported it, because it's one of the most beautiful passages in the whole of scripture. Did not our hearts burn within us? as he opened to us the scriptures. In Wales, where I come from, the fact that revivals took off easily and left their trace was in part due to the culture where fire was in evidence. Maybe I shouldn't repeat this, but I remember when I became a Catholic in school days, coming from that strong Welsh nonconformist background, although with the Benedictines in our parish I did find something of it occasionally, but an English tone, I found quite often that when it came to diocesan priests, they didn't have that same fire as I had been used to. And I thought to myself, why is this? Because we, as Catholics, have the truth, but we haven't necessarily that fire. Now, we need to recuperate this element, because fire, after all, is linked with Pentecost. When it came to the Protestant Reformation, that fire was seen above the high altar, when the first Carthusian martyrs were in prayer celebrating the Mass of the Holy Spirit, asking for light as to what to do, what to say before the king's officers. It was fire, tongues of fire actually, and so this gift of speech, of power, of empowered word, is directly from the Holy Spirit, and we need to claim it. It is not the same just to read, as it is to proclaim eye to eye, face to face, what is in our heart. One thing is to read a script, as one might do a lecture, no matter how well prepared it might be. Another is to ignite <coughs> and send that bomb <coughs> out to the people of God. One has the effect that it has, but if the people doze off, it has no effect, no matter how true it might be. One point made with fire can have an influence on the whole of a life to follow. This is important. I'm sure the Lord is not boring. Fire. What were they feeling in their heart? Love. One often thinks of love as something warm, a melting a fond feeling, fire. Our God is fire. Indeed, it says in the epistle to the Hebrews, our God is a consuming fire. Now, in this Easter tide, we must not forget how the explosion of the holy light is what comes through the centuries from the upper room, from the tomb, from Pentecost. That same power. We have the finger of God touching humanity. It is a real God, a living God, a God of fire, of light, of warmth, an explosive God. And the miracles that followed the first preaching in the early church are evidence of that. 
all the time we have these references to the Miriabilia Dei, the, the marvels of God, signs and wonders happening in the hands of the apostles. Mirabilia Dei. Now, is reading a script one of those Mirabilia Dei? Mm. With regard to preaching, we see that same fire at work in that very apostle who had disowned Christ. He did not want to have anything to do with him publicly at that point. He disclaimed any personal knowledge of him. And here he is proclaiming him as king of all. And this, this is actually a very powerful and pithy sermon and has its effect. And it precisely ends up in this mention of the outpouring of that spirit. It is the promise. With regard to the reading from the first letter of St. Peter, we are told that the ransom paid for us is not paid in anything corruptible, but in the precious blood of a lamb without spot or stain. Now, although slavery does exist in the world in new forms and also in old forms in some cultures, we in the West are not used to it, but they were very much used to it when St. Peter was writing Ransom. We remember how Our Lady of Ransom wanted to ransom Christians made captives by Moors, by the Islamic bloc, and they of course have slavery as part of their culture. <laughs> and unfortunately, the slaves were not treated well, and they can have, even to this day, sex slaves. It's a strange culture, very different from what the Lord Jesus Christ came to give on earth with his new commandment, which presumes treating all people as equal. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Christ, who, though known since before the world was made, has been revealed only in our time, the end of the ages, for your sake. So we have what the prophets and kings long hoped for. We have the fullness. We have fire. As we would say now, the oomph factor. Oh.